What we would like to do in this video is review the basics of projectile motion that we've learned in class and then apply this to doing problems with projectile motion. First of all, we learned that projectile motion is really two-dimensional motion. Objects that are exhibiting projectile motion are moving both horizontally and vertically at the same time. So you can see the motorcyclist is both going up and moving horizontally, exhibiting projectile motion. Another thing we learned about projectile motion when we did the two ball drop is that the horizontal and vertical motions that are going on do not affect each other. So we had, for instance, one ball that would fall straight down. We had another ball that we shot outwards, and it fell while it was moving horizontally. This is the one that's doing projectile motion. And when we look carefully at the level, at where the two balls are in the air, the one falling straight down and the one falling, moving horizontally while it falls, we notice that the yellow ball falls just like the red ball falls. The red ball is not moving horizontally at all. The yellow ball is moving horizontally. Its falling motion is just like the red ball's falling motion. It just so happens that the yellow ball is moving horizontally while it's falling. The red ball is just falling vertically. The yellow ball falls just like the red ball, showing that just because the yellow ball is moving horizontally does not mean that it falls any differently than the red ball, which has no horizontal motion. So we concluded that the horizontal motion of the, of the yellow ball is not affecting its falling its vertical motion at all. Then we looked at this simulation in class two, which showed us the recipe for making projectile motion. So the red ball is exhibiting projectile motion. And if you watch as the red ball moves, the blue ball is tracking the red ball's horizontal motion and the green ball is tracking the red ball's vertical motion. So I can see that the red ball, the blue ball is always below the red ball. So the red ball is following the motion of the red ball horizontally. Likewise, the green ball is always lined up vertically with the red ball. So that the green ball is tracking the red ball's vertical motion the blue ball is tracking the red ball's horizontal motion. So the way you build a parabolic projectile path is to have a vertical accelerated motion, which I can tell because the spaces between the green dots is getting smaller and smaller. So you mix that accelerated motion with horizontal constant velocity. So the projectile is accelerated vertically no acceleration horizontally. Gravity is only able to change the velocity of the red ball vertically. It's not able to change the velocity of the red ball horizontally. So projectile motion is a combination of horizontal constant velocity and vertical constant acceleration. So how do I do problems with projectile motion? Well, first of all, the fact that a projectile is moving in two different dimensions simultaneously, horizontally and vertically, and that, that those motions do not affect each other uh, comes into play with the formulas that we use. So first of all, uh, one formula that we've been using is distance equals V initial times time plus one-half times acceleration times time squared. This is called the equation of motion. And what happens is with a projectile, which is doing two things at once, moving horizontally and vertically, this formula splits in two and ends up having a horizontal version and a vertical version. So let's rewrite both of these formulas for horizontal and vertically. So horizontally, what we would say is the horizontal distance we're going to call x. The initial velocity has horizontal and vertical components. So since this is the horizontal formula, we use the initial velocity's horizontal component, or x component, times time, plus 1 half, times the acceleration 
horizontally times time squared. And likewise, vertically, the vertical distance is like a height, so we use a y for that, and that equals the initial velocity vertically, or the y component of the initial velocity, times time, plus one-half acceleration y, or the y component of the acceleration, times time squared. So now distance time formulas with projectile motion get two versions instead of just one. This is the formula I would use to describe how things move horizontally, and this is the formula that I would use to describe how things move vertically. But next, let's talk about how do we get this? How do we get V initial X component or V initial Y component? How do we get acceleration X component or acceleration Y component? Remember this video? There's the ball that's launched and I'm noticing that the blue arrow is the initial velocity and the initial velocity the velocity at all times actually has an X component and a Y component and as the ball moves we noticed that the horizontal component never changes and the vertical component is always changing so we wanted to answer a question well what does V initial X and V initial Y mean so first of all let's let's notice that I've got V initial is the blue arrow right here and we launched it at an angle theta which is right here. Now this is the horizontal component of the initial velocity. The way we represent that is that's what we call V initial X. That's the horizontal component of the initial velocity. And then there's this. This is the vertical component of the initial velocity. So we represent that with V initial Y. So normally in a problem, what's going to happen is they're going to give us the initial, and they're going to give us the angle. And then if you remember from the formulas we just wrote out, what we really need from that is V initial X for the X distance time formula. And we need V initial Y for the vertical uh, distance time formula. So the question is how to get those. So all we're going to use is a little bit of trigonometry let's say we had V initial X now what that would equal is V initial X is like the adjacent side of this triangle so V initial X is the adjacent side so I'm going to use cosine so V initial X would be V initial cosine of theta likewise if I want V initial Y which I need for the vertical formula V initial Y is the vertical part of this triangle. So it's this vertical. This is the opposite side to the angle. So V initial Y is going to equal V initial times the sine of theta since V initial Y is opposite to the angle. Last thing is that in the formulas for horizontal and vertical motion we also saw terms like this AX or A horizontal and AY, or acceleration vertical. What are those? Well, as we look at this animation one more time, we can see, first of all, that if I concentrate on the horizontal component, which is this guy right here, if I keep watching the horizontal arrow, I'm going to notice it never changes. So that represents the velocity horizontally, and if the velocity horizontally doesn't change, then that means that there's no acceleration. So I can write actually the horizontal acceleration is going to be zero. Now if I also rewind this and I watch just the vertical component I will notice that the vertical component is always changing and it shrinks as it points upward and then as it falls it increases downward. So the acceleration vertically though is caused by gravity so we can say that the acceleration vertically is minus g or that the acceleration vertically 
is equal to minus 9.8 meters per second every second. It's the acceleration due to gravity. So to summarize, we've learned how to use a formula, learned a formula, that we can use to calculate things related to projectile motion. And we found out that we need to write a horizontal and vertical uh, versions of the formula. So the horizontal one looked like this. X stands for horizontal distance, and that equals the horizontal component of the initial velocity times the time in the air, plus one-half times the horizontal component of the acceleration times the time in the air squared. We also learn that it's not accelerating horizontally um, because gravity is completely vertical. So this formula just boils down to x is equal to v initial x times time and that that is the formula for calculating things horizontally in projectile motion. Likewise vertically we found that we have a, a very similar formula and that this formula pays attention to the vertical motion of the projectile and we learn that here the acceleration in the y direction actually is caused by gravity so it's negative g so that we could actually write this formula as v initial in the y direction times time minus one-half g times time squared.